OpenAI's GPT models were only trained using data up until September 2021. So what if you want to ask it a question about something that happened after that? What can you do? Well, as of the 23rd of May, Microsoft announced that G ChatGPT will now have the ability to do live web searches using Bing Search. The technology underlying this integration is called Prometheus, and it's really quite impressive. So today we're going to walk through how this works, how they do it, and also talk about why it might be difficult to achieve the same level of quality if you try to build your own using Python, OpenAI's APIs, and the Google Search API. So let's go. Let's start with the ChatGPT interface. Note that this feature is only available on the paid version of ChatGPT called ChatGPT Plus, and it's only available on GPT-4. We're first going to run this query using default, which does not have the ability to run live search. Then we will choose, we will rerun the query using browse with Bing, and you can see the difference. So let's go with default. And our query today is which year did the one Hotel Central Park in New York win a Condé Nast award? And I know this happened in 2022, so it should not be able to answer my question. Oh, as an AI model, I do not have access to real-time data or information. Its last training date cut off was September 2021. So indeed, it does not know. So let's do another search. Let's do use GPT-4, and now we choose Browse with Bing. We're going to copy the same query and paste it in. Now you can see it's doing something different. By expanding this part, we can see that what it did as a first step was to turn my prompt into a search query. One Hotel Central Park, New York Condé Nast award year. If we click on this link, it will take us to this Bing search results page using these keywords as the search term. So you can see in here, you've got links to different websites and little snippets underneath each link. Technically, because I didn't ask a very complicated question, it was probably able to answer my question without just from these snippets alone. But you can see that it went further than that. It clicked on a natural web page. So let's click into this now. It is in fact the second link in the unpaid section. So there's actually some intelligence there trying to decide which link to click into for more information. So we can see on the link that it did click into it was a list of the top 20 hotels in New York that received the same award. It gave me back this response. The One Hotel Central Park in New York won the Condé Nast Reader's Award in the year 2022 and was ranked number eight with a score of blah, blah, blah. And what's really cool is if you mouse over this uh, footnote, you can see a real citation to where ChatGPT got this piece of information. This is called grounding, and it helps to overcome the hallucination issues that we faced using previous versions of the GPT models. Just to prove that it is actually digging into this specific web page, let's ask it a question that it would not know just by looking at the search result snippets. It will only know this if it read the, the details of the web page. And this is important when we come to implementing our own version. So, which hotel was ranked number 12 in the same award category?
The hotel that was ranked number twelve in the same category was Freehand, New York. Let's go double check this. Indeed, Freehand, New York. And you can see it did not go and do another search after I asked this question. It just read the information. And why is this really important? Because when we come to implement our own version, this first step is easy. It's easy for us to get search results uh, and also snippets. Uh, Bing, Bing Search API, Google Search API, and there, there are a number of other third-party search APIs that can get us this information, no problem. But if we then need to build the logic to first decide which link to click on and then to click into a specific web page to retrieve deeper information, what we will face are anti-bot technology challenges. Because many websites now, they do not want this kind of robot, uh, robot traffic. So there's a number of sophisticated techniques to try and identify and block these robots. And we, we are a robot here. So for example, it, it might look at your IP address. It might look at your search patterns. It might look at your user agent. And there's a, a, a whole raft of different attributes associated with your request that could give the website a hint that you're a robot. And in that case, it might throw up a CAPTCHA question or it might just block you entirely, which makes the second step much more difficult to uh, implement. And the other, the other challenge that you're going to need to overcome is when you fetch one of these web pages, because there's so much code on the page, you might exceed the maximum token length. So you can't just shove in all of that information that you get into the back into the prompt without parsing the, the information that you need out of it first. This is a step-by-step -step summary of how ChatGPT with live search works. So you've got a user, uh, sends in a query into the ChatGPT interface. And what ChatGPT will do at that time is to make a decision. Does it have enough information to complete the request or does it need to do a live search? If it needs to do a live search, it will then reach out to Bing Search to do these number of steps. The first step is to convert the user prompt into a search query. Then it will stick this query into Bing search and get a search results page back. It will then decide which link on the search results page to click on. It will then fetch the, uh, click on that link and fetch the website data back from that specific page. Then it will parse the information it gets back before feeding it pa uh, back to ChatGPT. Then ChatGPT will incorporate this into a nice response back to the user.